So another really important thing that we do when we try to think about music is, is explore a little bit underneath the surface and try and ask questions about how it works. And we thought that in this series we would try and do um, this sort of work with pieces of music that perhaps aren't always considered that often as subjects for analysis. I mean, normally we talk about analysing a Mozart symphony or a, a Brahms piano piece or something like that because they're quite big and complex pieces of music which take a lot of work. It's, it's actually you want to get your spade out and, and really dig under the surface to work out exactly what's going on. But I think you can do analysis with pretty much any piece of music and you can certainly ask questions about why that music is doing the function that it, that it particularly has in, in, that, in that situation. So with that in mind, I thought we'd have a look at a piece of music that probably everyone listening to this recording knows already, and that's the theme tune to The Simpsons. Um, I, it's the most, seems to be the most popular TV show ever made, pretty much, and I, I love it, I'm a complete Simpsons addict. So I thought it would be really interesting to look at and ask some questions about why the composer of, of that theme tune, so a composer called Danny Elfman, chose that particular arrangement of sounds, that particular piece of music um, to introduce The Simpsons to us every night when we watch it on TV. So when you hear The Simpsons theme tune, Katie, what do you think of immediately? Is it just obviously obviously The Simpsons, or are there, are there, is it possible to describe some of the musical elements that stand out? I think absolutely definitely The Simpsons. Um, I would say, in terms of musical elements that stand out, I would say probably the two things that would strike me as being ideas that I pick up on are slightly oddball and madcap because mm -hmm. of some of the harmonies that are used, which yeah. I know you want to talk about. Well, there's a lot of this. <laughs> which is kind of like, for me, it's kind of a runaway train. I think um, James R. Brooks, who was the director or producer of The Simpsons, said it sounded to him like a lemming is running off a cliff. <laughs> it's just kind of... And I think that the, we can talk about this in, in a moment, but I think the... Um, the actual visual element of the of the Simpsons is hilarious because it's kind of everybody rushing, rushing so much, trying to push everyone else out of the way, getting in the car, like going through red traffic lights, rushing towards this obviously enormous goal. And the goal is sit in front of the TV and watch TV for the rest of the evening for like six hours. Yes. And I think that's a hilarious part. And I think that's totally in the music. Um, that's there that we're sort of always rushing to think. I mean, one of the ways we can ramp up... Um, you know, excitement in music is, is to do something called modulate, which is, you know, when we change the key, and, and it's a, something that's used a lot in musical theatre, you know, every time we go through a sort of, we've had a chorus and we've, you know, we want to move on to the next exciting bit, we ramp up the excitement with modulations, and, and so there's definitely an idea of heading towards a real goal with this, with this thing, so that's the first thing that kind of perhaps comes to mind. Indeed, I think the other thing is that there's a sense of it being um, a kind of a big overture to a big show because in the space of really not many seconds at all, if you're if you're watching particularly kind of cut version of the opening credits, um, you have a huge orchestra and endless percussion instruments and string players and all kinds of things that are going on in the background um, building very quickly and you've got the modulations as well so it's almost like you know come and see the show it's everyone's like a, it's rushing like a, to the show it's like a New York show I, mean, I, can, I can try and play but it's big it's big thick harmony it's like a like you've got big chords you know these are, these are absolutely straight out of a Broadway musical you could use, that would be that would be somewhere there yeah it's music theatre it is absolutely and, and I think that's Obviously, you know, we've got a, we've got a dramatic thing in, in a way, you know, The Simpsons is a piece of theatre, um, it is trying to show us ourselves, but um, it shows us ourselves in quite a distorted way, and I think there's also elements in the music that we could talk about, how, how he, he shows us that what we're dealing with here is some kind of alternate reality, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's particularly to do with the sorts of chords and the, the, the sorts of melodies that he's using because it's, it's not the sort of traditional melody we think of sort of a I don't know, twinkle a little star it's all the white notes you know nothing out of the ordinary there at all and they all come from one particular key they are all you know um, grouped together in a way that's very familiar to us have instantly when we look at the Simpsons theme not only do you have these chords going underneath which are very unusual um, because we're more used to hearing something like this which is kind of more standard we're used to hearing this but the Simpsons it, it's including you know if we're talking technical language it's including a flattened fifth which is an F sharp so I'm playing um, normally a, a C major chord here this is a kind of standard C major chord but, but to, to come up with the Simpsons sound you need to put in instead of a G so you've got your standard triad of um, C, E and G instead I'm putting in an F sharp um, so it sounds a bit like this I think actually that's become so familiar. You play that chord to anyone, they go, oh, that's a Simpsons chord. 
It was just so, so familiar. Yep. And so you've got this thing going underneath very, very quickly, setting up a very unusual sort of, and, and, and totally careering. It's like it's like Homer's car going around the corner. It yep. kind of like might just fall off the road at any any moment. And then the melody, which kind of goes along with this, it, it, it doesn't take all of its notes from the uh, sort of standard diatonic C major scale. It sticks in loads of other weird notes. And in fact, it's much closer to a whole tone scale than it is to um, a standard major scale. So. We're quite used to hearing these parts of the, of the melody as home is careering around. We get all of that sort of stuff. That's that's whole tones, and the melody itself starts to put in some very unusual um, sounds as well, like this. Uh, that and it's it's those kind of the, the notes that don't quite fit in, and so all of this is setting up an idea that everything doesn't quite sit right. It's quite familiar, but it's somehow it's, it's showing us a slightly sort of, I don't know, alternate or some, somehow distorted view of our, ourselves. I, guess. I think that's right, and I think, as you say, it's, it's, it's finding the balance between familiar and unfamiliar, because the chords that the piece is based on, because of that, because of that fifth that's not a fifth, means that it doesn't quite feel exactly as it might be if it were a nice standard straightforward Broadway because we can try and do it we can try and do it as it would be do you want to to come and like do the bass and I'll try and do a sort of major version if I can so if you just do me a kind of like one and five vamp kind of thing yeah so yeah very good so I'm going to try and play um, a sort of major standard as we would expect The idea was that that sounds a little bit more. We can sort of cope with that. That's kind of we're used to sort of hearing that quite a lot. Um, I, I do feel that the chords and the and the notes that Danny often chooses to use do show us this is something a bit a bit different from the. They do, but they keep us just on the right side of it not being too old. Because actually, all of the kind of inverted commas wrong notes in that melody do, even if very temporarily, resolve onto the right notes. To mean that it's like each time it's like something's being bent slightly, but it's allowed to straighten up before you move on. That it's mm-hmm. kind of a slightly elastic thing, rather than it just being a completely random succession. Because we could just go <laughs> exactly. So that that, just, there is yeah. a frame of reference, but it's a frame of reference that's slightly skewed. It's a sort of Hall of Mirrors type musical effect. Mm-hmm. I think that's absolutely right. And also, he doesn't leave us there. So the most, the best bit I think of the Simpsons theme is the is the conclusion, right? The, the fact that the end of this um, crazy careering place and there's, there's ideas in music about resolution and all these things and I, I think it's quite interesting because most of the time you know tonal music uses one of about three different ways to finish um, we talk about in fact well well yeah one of about three different ways to finish we talk about cadences cadences being the last two harmonic changes before the piece is over and so a really standard one is just um, what we call a perfect cadence which goes from the, the fifth chord so in this case a G to a chord on the tonic, which is a C. So it would be something like... Something like that. Absolutely. Okay. There's other ones. There's a kind of a plagal one, which is a bit more like an, an Amen people say about, about this one, which is going from the fourth chord in the, in the scale, which would be, in this case, an F, again going back to, to one. Something like... Something like that. Um, what's different about The Simpsons is we get... Which is interesting, because, in fact, to me it feels like just just bending in it's very like we're just going to go oh yeah we're so close as you say we're so close to where we normally would be and then we just we just bend in and, and complete it yeah so that that f sharp that all the way through has been not quite right finally is is knocked back into being a g for the end so that you actually get a resolution hmm. and it feels like it's finished because imagine if it wasn't that so if we ended like uh <laughs> No, because if you end on a chord like that, then that that sort of taps into a lot more sort of mystery horror type. Yeah, and that it, and chord, that's like classic psycho chords. Like those those kind of chords are actually, you know. You can see that being an underscore for some Hitchcock. Absolutely, you know, yeah. Film. And we want to, we just want to remind everyone that it's just a bit of fun, right? And so all the distortions and the weirdness that we're going to show you is really just a just a bit of fun, right? And it's funny how much a theme tune can set up expectations because we have really sometimes without realising it a whole different, um, a whole sort of vocabulary of different kinds of musical gestures and harmonies and instruments that are used and 
pace of music and all of that sort of thing that relates to particular genres of TV and film. Um, and you can really play into stereotypes in, in, in ways that, let's say, the Mel Brooks films really kind of are brilliant for the, the way that they spoof particular styles of music writing. Um, but that if you end on what is the wrong chord for the genre that you're working in, then it doesn't fit. Mm. And because The Simpsons is a sort of, it has to end like a sitcom. It can't end like uh, yeah, the outer like limits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's just whoa. I don't know about that. That's that's kind of we're not sure. And, and I think it's sort of giving us a nice to go. Yeah, it's all right. Indeed, you know, it's and a it's bit fun. which is why, and it's interesting that how many series it's become so iconic that despite the fact The Simpsons has been going for series and series and series it's not changed. Mm. Whereas sometimes when TV series do change after one or two series, um, their theme tune or something about their theme tune, it can really knock your idea of what the series is about because it changes your conception of how it works. Mm -hmm. And do we feel that, because The Simpsons theme tune hasn't changed, I mean, in fact, it's kind of remarkable that it hasn't changed over 25 years of, of being on and we still laugh at it, like every time, we still like, like there's a different joke around the sofa every time and they, they get on it in a different way or whatever but every time we still still really love it and it's it's got something about it and I think um, yeah hopefully we've like you know just in a short time we've been able to try and ask question why and also hopefully sort of wake people up to the idea that music for film and TV doesn't just happen by accident actually huge amounts of thought goes into how do we make a sound that fits you know the 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 idea behind because because with the opening credits to something it's kind of a, a whole philosophy you somehow got to in thirty seconds of music you've got to come up with a philosophy for the whole potentially you know ten hours of TV that they're making and um, that can be played every week that becomes hugely recognisable because I suppose one of the other functions I assume the reason that they have theme music is so that if you're flicking through the channels you hear you hear the Simpsons theme music you go, oh brilliant the Simpsons is on I can I can go and watch that. So it's, it's a really hard job, actually, I think, and, and this is a particularly brilliant example. Absolutely, and it's, it, you only, if you want an excellent demonstration of just how big a part music plays in the way that we watch film and TV, all you've got to do is switch on the TV for half an hour and put it on mute and see what you end up missing. <laughs> because a huge part of what we see is to do with what we hear.